All right, everybody here. Welcome to my card review. This is Tarot. This is the card review for the Delve into Deep Home mini set expansion for Hearthstone, uh, which is the expand, uh, which is the mini set for the I forget the exact expansion uh, Showdown in the Badlands. So, bunch of the uh, cross class cards here. Uh, by the way, just to get this out of the way here. Uh, the last review, I basically said I was done with Hearthstone. And I think if anyone's played Arena, you will know that the last season of Arena, the last two months, have probably been the best Arena has been in years. So, I'm not saying I'm sticking around. I'm not saying I'm going to keep doing reviews. But I am in a much, much, much more positive mood right now with Arena than I was before. I may not do the next review, at least a, a video review, just because I think I'm going to be back with my family uh, when the set releases. So, I'm not going to have the... I'm not going to have the empty space to do it because I stay at their house. So I don't even have my own room. I just like literally sleep out in the living room. I, I sleep on the couch. So I'm not going to have a space to do this uh, probably because I'm going to be there end of March, early April. So I probably do st probably still do written review then. But I'm uh, right now I'm in a better mood on that based on my last video. Anyways, uh, let's go right into it because we got a lot of cards to go over here. And a lot of these cards are going to be cross-class cards. So let's just get right into it. All right. We start off here with Death Knight. By the way, here, standard thing uh, standard thing here for scores. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to give a number value, and I'm just going to give like a star system. So eight star here is Sargeras, and then seven star cards that should be banned, six stars. Th these are based off Hearth Brand uh, tier list, and so on. Just basically my card reviews. So let's get into it. Uh, so not much needs to be said. Let's get into it. So first one, Death Knight. First card here we've got is uh, Cortite's Crusher, Weapon. Three mana, three, three, lifesteal, freeze any character damaged by your hero. First card that comes to mind. By the way, I've seen these cards before, but I haven't really like thought of them like I do for a normal review. First card that comes to mind is the Warrior Weapon. The, uh, the, the four mana, three, three weapon that gives you three armor. So that's basically lifesteal plus freeze. So if we go over to Warrior... And we see, uh, where is the weapon? Where is the weapon? Craftsman's Hammer, yeah. <clears throat> Craftsman's Hammer, that's a four-star card. Now, you get a better version of Craftsman's Hammer for a Death Knight, but it's in a class that does worse. Uh, that's going to be... It's not going to value it as much. Number one, because Death Knight has the one mana Discover a Weapon, which uh, can just get you stronger weapons. And number two... Uh, because of that, because they're not as much of a control class in Arena, this isn't as valuable. So the whole freeze whatever you hit. So freeze any character damaged by your hero is, I'm going to say, less valuable because of that. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it's a, I'm still going to say it's a four-star card. I'm just saying it's uh, uh, just basically that. Like, I don't think it's as good. I don't think this in Death Knight is as good as... Craftsman's Hammer is in Warrior. And by the way, I'll get to the uh, Arena sets and the uh, the uh, Duels Treasures at the end, because that's also in here. All right. Okay, let's go. Next one here. Uh, cross Class card. I'm just going to do these for each one. All right. For each class. So this one, Hunter, uh, Death Knight and Hunter, Mistmatch Fossils, Discover Beast and Undead, Swap Their Stats. So I wanted to double check here. So if I go here, Beast... Death Knight. Oh, sorry, let me see here. I have the sets. I have the new sets loaded up here. So I'm just going to check type beast. Oh, sorry. Minion type beast. All right. So the one thing I was a little bit afraid of was Hollow Hound. Because uh, I was that was the one thing I wanted to double check here. So, mismatched, fo mis mismatched fossils, discover an abyss, none that I was afraid of hollow ho hollowed hound. Because being able to get a hollowed hound that has a ton of health or, or has a lot more health or a lot more attack would make it even much more powerful. So, that's the one thing I was worried about. So, there are going to be things where you're going to find certain undead that you're going to be able to discover. So, like, you're going to be able to get a Reska off of this. Now, is it going to be all the time? 
Probably not. Because if we take a look, there's like 43 undead. So you're going to get like 3 out of 43 or something like that. Uh, so that's what? Uh, okay, so it's going to be like about 20... 3 out of 43, 3 divided by 43, 10... About 15% of the time you're going to get a Reska. And that's going to suck. So, okay, yeah. Point being, 3 mana, get 2 cards, you can do shenanigans with it. That's good. Is it 3 star good? I don't think so. I don't... Uh, like... In a certain meta, I would say it's three star good, but otherwise, it's basically it's basically arcane. It's basically arcane internet intellect. So that's that's a two star card. So I'm going to say this is a two star card. There could be situations with this, but I don't fully trust it. Okay. Next one here, Obsidian Revenant. <laughs> Six mana, four six taunt, uh, taunt death rattle. Some two random death rattle minions that cost three or less. So you get a decent sized taunt, and you get a bunch of other stuff behind it that have death rattle. I mean, this is going to be a really, really, really good stats card. So, uh, like six mana, four six. Like even if you summon like two one drops, I think that's still pretty good because six mana you'd want at least like 7-7 seven, seven in current arena, and you're going to easily get that off of this. So this is an above-average stats card. Uh, that's at least three stars. Is that enough to hit four? I don't think so. So I'm just going to say three-star card. And by the way, if we, we want to go over here, we can take a look. It doesn't matter the class. Uh, let's get rid of undead. Let's get mechanics, death rattle. Like, one, two, three, minion. All right, here. So, like, you could get a, you could get a 2-2 two, two off of it. You could get something like a 2-1 two, one, two, two, one with Divine Shield. You get Rant Side, which gives you more stuff. You could get Bone Web. You can get an egg off of that. Uh, like, I'm just taking a look at some things that you can get off of this. Uh, Shadowed Spirit. Like, that's good. Pops a cooler. Uh, Deathbringer. That's a high roll. Uh, bovine skeleton can be a high roll. I mean, student of stars can be a high roll. Like, there's a lot of potential high rolls that you can get out of this. There'll be some things that don't work and some things that do work. All right. So anyway, uh, good good card for stats. I don't think it rises enough to be a four star card. All right. Next one here, prosthetic hand, which is death knight and paladin. 3 mana, 3, 1, Magnetize, Reborn, can magnetize to mechs or undead. So, 3 mana, 3, 1, Reborn, that's basically a candle taker. And then it has Magnetize, and it can magnetize to mechs or undead, which, again, that's going to be useful. So, I would say a slightly better candle taker. We take a look. Candle taker is currently in Hearth Arena. Like, candle taker. It's a medium 3-star card. So, this has Magnetize, which is good. It has Magnetize to Undead, which, again, that's good. So, is it is that enough to raise it to four stars? N nah, I don't think so. Yeah. So, process here. Process that it can. Three stars. All right. <laughs> Next one here. Mining Casualties. All right. So, Mining Casualties, 2 mana, summon 2 one, one Silver Recruits. With Death Rattle, summon a 1-1 one, one Frail Ghoul. So, you basically get... So, it's summon a, uh, summon 2 one, ones that summon a 1-1 one, one off of themselves for 2 mana. So, you're getting 4 stats in total for 2 mana. Uh, we've had... I, I want to say that we've had a card like this before, but I cannot remember exactly what the card is. But anyways, it's a sticky... Like a... If you take a look at a shielded mini-bot, and I'm going to use that as the baseline. A shielded mini-bot is a 2-mana... 2-2, two 2-3. Two, two, I, I forget if they updated shielded mini-bot or whatever. I think shielded mini... Okay, I'm, I'm going to double-check. 
Okay, one second here. I'm going to double check something right here because I think Shield Minibot got updated. Did it get updated? No, it's still 2 2. All right. Okay, anyway, for some reason it, it felt like it got updated to a 2 3. But anyway, Shield Minibot is basically the same thing. You have a 2 2 worth of stats, plus you have Divine Shield that blocks it so you can make the trade in. So here, with Mining Casualties, you've got 2 2 worth of stats. You can trade into something and you're still going to have 2 2 worth of stats. Or you can split trade into something, and you're still going to have 2-2 worth of stats. Your opponent is going to have to kill these minions off four times to be able to deal with them, which is more annoying than a mini bot, but still as annoying. So overall, this is a really, really good 2-drop. That's really what needs to be said about this card. Uh, I think, I'm thinking uh, that, I don't think, is that an arena for Druid? I was going to say, I was trying to think if Druid had the, whatchamacallit, the uh, one mana, the lingering zombie, still in arena. It didn't ha doesn't have that. All right. Mini, I'm pretty sure Minibot was a four-star card. I'm pretty sure this is going to be a four-star card just because of how sticky this is, just because of... Ah, that's card I was thinking of. Haunted Spider. Uh, so Haunted Spider, you had one, two, the death rattled into two, one, ones. So, uh, from Nax Ramos. So you could say that. So, yeah, that's going to be a four-star card just because of how good it is in the uh, early game. And then for Paladin, it becomes even better because you can have this as a buff target. All right. So, anyways, we take a look at Death Knight. Death Knight, uh, they got solid cards. Nothing really bad from this set. So, not much needs to be said there. All right, let's go next one here to Demon Hunter. First card we're going to do, Phil Fisher. Okay, Fell Fissure 4 mana, deal 2 damage to all minions. At the start of your next turn, deal 2 more damage to all minions. Alright, I don't like this card. If it was enemy minions, that would be fine. But with... So the, the problem with this card is you cannot um, develop with it. So if you, if you play this on 4... You can clear something and you can damage stuff later on. But four mana deal two is not as good as it once was. And the other problem is that if you play this in the mid, mid game to late game, you really can't put anything small on the board and you're gonna ha not going to have that much mana after playing this because it's just going to get blown up anyways. And your opponent is going to know you're going to play around with this and they're going to either play things that it doesn't matter if it gets damaged or they're going to make trades like if they have a board, they'll make trades on your stuff to up, blow up your side of the board so you don't have anything because of this. So ultimately, I think this is not, it's not an immediate impact. So I think it's not really that great of an AOE. I, I will say one star on this just because I think... No, nah, no, nah, I'll say two stars because it's still an AOE. And you're going to find things to do with it. I just don't think it's going to be useful. It's not a card I would draft. All right. Burning Heart. One mana shared with Warrior. Deal two damage to a minion. If it survives, give your hero three attack this turn. This is kind of like the uh, Cruel Taskmaster effect. It's, it's kind of like the Cruel Taskmaster effect. Instead, your hero gets the attack rather than the, uh, whatchamacallit, the minion. And the minion has... I'm trying to think if this is good. Because we had a zero mana version of this for Warrior. Deal one damage to a minion, give it plus two attack. And that was never really good. So this one, you have to deal two damage to a minion. It has to survive. So... Uh, so if it's an enemy minion, you have to use this specifically to set up a trade. And then you get a bonus attack. And I think, I, I okay, yeah, I, I don't, this is like way too, um, there are going to be edge cases for this. So I'll say it's two stars, but I don't think it's a good card. Okay, 
Crimson Expanse, choose a damaged minion, summon a copy of it that goes dormant for one turn. All right. So this is, so you play something, you damage it. You use this to copy it. You, you pay four mana in advance to copy it. You cannot use it that turn. It awakens the next turn, and it is st from dormant is still going to be damaged. So you have two like two turns of summoning sickness for it. I'm trying to think here. This does not seem like that great of a card. Like it, it's going to be above average. I don't. I don't know if it's three stars or not. I think. This is one of those cards that's weird. Because I understand value-wise, this is going to be above value, but it's going to be slow. And so this is going to be like, like you play this to like you play a wolf, you play you injure the wolf, you copy the wolf, and you you pay four mana to get a 6-6 six, six in a couple turns, and then you can do that in another couple turns. And so that's kind of like the problem where I'm at. It's like, I don't know how useful this card is. I think, like, it's certainly not Forge of Souls. Like, Forge of Souls is, like, so beyond busted. It's not even close to Forge of Souls, which is just, like, significantly better. So, it, it, I don't like this card, but I'm trying to think, is it two stars or three stars? I'm going to say this is going to be a low three-star card. Uh, like, is, this is very, very slow, but I do think you are going to get the value out of it eventually. I don't think, like, there are certain decks you're definitely not going to want to take this in. But you are going to get the value out of it. Okay, next one. Shadestone Skulker. Rush Battlecry. Take your weapon and gain its stats. Death Rattle. Give it back. So if your weapon is like a 4-1, So if your weapon's a 4-1, this becomes a 5-2 rush. But it requires you to have a weapon, which is the problem. So I assume when it says give it back that you do not get the, uh, whatchamacallit back? You, um, I assume when it says give it back that the weapon does not go back to its natural state. It goes back to its injured state. Okay, I think it's a little too situational here. It's a it's a rush card that is only worth it if you have a weapon. So I don't yeah, I don't think that's good. I think this is one star. And Demon Hunter right now, they don't even work with weapons. That's not the issue. Like what like Demon Hunter, they win by wolves. Okay. Okay, two mana, one, two. After hero attacks, draw a card. Okay, this is good. This is good. So it's two mana, draw two cards. Like a one, two, especially in Demon Hunter, that is fine. So it's a little bit of delayed card draw. I'm going to say this is three stars. There's not much needs to be said there. Rogue also has this for reference earlier. For reference later, I mean. Like, I think... Like, um, there might be weapon buffs. I'm trying to think if there are weapon buffs in Demon Hunter. I don't know. But it's still... But it's still, because of the hero power, this is better in Demon Hunter. And it's going to be useful because of that. And even if not, you're still going to get like two cards out of this eventually. All right, so Demon Hunter. Basically, Demon Hunter's in the same spot. Draft five copies of Wolves if you want to do well. All right, Druid. Okay, let's start with Druid. Six mana, Crystal Cluster. Gain three empty mana crystals. Any that cannot fit, summon a 3-7 Elemental with Taunt. So, you're, you're not going to play this for the mana. You're not going to play this for the empty mana crystals. You're not going to use this to ramp on turn six to get to turn nine. That's just going to be a mistake. Especially for like six mana to get three mana, and then you gain... It, it's not. It, trust me, it's not worth it to ramp. Like, Nourish... Nourish, you can kind of cheat out. It's almost worth it. Crystal Cluster, you're just going... 
you're getting a couple extra turns of 10 mana. And your opponent's already going to be set enough that they can possibly deal with that. So you're not you're holding this until turn 10. And at turn 10, you're going to summon the uh, three seven elementals with taunt. Three three seven elementals with taunt for six mana. I'm not sure. There was a warrior card. I think it was either war, it was like a warrior card, which I think was summoned like two 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 sevens or something along those lines. I, I want to say it was like six mana summon two two sevens with taunt or something along those lines. I forget that card offhand. My Hearthstone card knowledge has uh, gone just because there's too many cards now. So is this going to be good? Useful, yes. Uh, good, I don't know. I think it's slow. It's useful when it comes out if you just overlook the drawback that you can't play it past turn 10. If you're getting to turn 10, like... And that's the other problem. If you're getting to turn 10 as Druid, are you in a good spot? Because Druid basically wins by just... Having a ton of dragons and then hoping that your opponent can't just like rush you down. Hoping that your opponent does not play a big minion. Hoping that your minions can deal with the opponent's minions. That's how Druid wins. And so that's the reason why even though Druid has such incredibly powerful cards, they are so inconsistent. They're like, like I think anyone who's played has known, anyone who's played Arena has had those games where Druid has been absolutely insane. They have had like these incredible drafts, incredible decks, incredible dragon synergy, incredible ramping, and then somehow you get a victory and you have no idea how you got that victory facing the level of cards that you did. And the very short version from playing against and playing a lot of Druid, why they are so consistently mediocre in this expansion is that they do not have the tools to play a control game. All right, so this is kind of like the soapbox. So it's like they have all this value stuff, but they do not have the other cards that are needed to play this. Like Warrior is one of those classes that can play it because they have uh, Bellowing Flames and they have the uh, Trial by Fire to just clear the boards. And so they can eventually... And so something like Odin is an incredibly powerful in Warrior, but it's incredibly powerful because Warrior has all those control to tools to get there. Uh, Warlock has a lot of control tools that allow it to get there. Like Death Knight has a... They have healing. They have a lot of healing, and they have a lot of cards that can generate healing that will let it get there. So it's like these these classes, like Shaman, before they got nerfed, have they had the uh, elementals. They have a lot of AoE. They have a lot of things to get there. Druid doesn't have that. So it's one of these things where I'm going back to Crystal Cluster here, and I'm saying, oh, this is going to be a good card, but is it going to be a card that lets you win? And I'm kind of trying to balance both of those when I make my tier score. So if I'm saying this as a card, it's a three-star card. If I'm saying, like, does it help you win? Will it improve your deck? Then that's the problem. I don't think it does. So that, that's kind of like the issue I have here with this card, and it's entirely a meta thing with that. And then also because of the, uh, like here, patch notes, uh, Descent into Dragons is leaving, so Druid's going to lose a lot of Dragon Synergy anyways because of that. So yeah, I, I'm not... Ha I, I'll say three stars and I'll just move on here because I have a lot of cards to get over here. Pendant of Earth, discover a minion from your deck, gain armor equal to its cost. This is basically a uh, shield sign. So it, it's an well, old, old version of Shield Slam. Uh, three mana, get a card, gain armor. All right, is that really good? Not really. Let's take a look here. I showed, sorry. All right. Shield Block. The current version of Shield Block is two mana, gain five armor, draw a card. So this, three mana, gain armor, and... Get a minion. Discover a minion. Discover a minion better than draw a card, probably, but it costs one more, and you the armor is probably going to be less than that. So overall, 
And you don't even have like the armor synergy that warrior does because shield block is propped up by that. So this is going to be, sorry, this is going to be probably two stars. Yeah, nothing special with this card. Shattered Reflection, choose a minion, add a copy of it to your hand, deck, and battlefield. This is like a Faceless Manipulator. Is that Faceless? Faceless Manipulator is not. Arena for such a long time, so. Anyway, five mana, get a copy of a minion, draw two cards. So the minion has to be on the board. It can be your opponent's minion as well. This is going to be one of those cards that's just going to be super annoying because your opponent is going to play a Legendary, and then you're going to be able to use this, copy that Legendary, probably clear off your opponent, and then you have two Legendaries. So this is one of those, This is going to be one of those feel-bad cards. Is it great? No, it's a little bit too situational for, my, uh, for what I'm going to say. I'm going to say three stars, and I'm going to say high three stars. I don't think it's consistent enough to get to four stars, I think it's definitely better than Crystal Cluster. I think this might actually be a winning card because this is because of some of the stuff you can get. But I think overall it's still in that three star range. It just doesn't do enough. Grimstone Guardian Taunt. Choose one. Discard two cards or destroy one of your mana crystals. Forge do neither. So you can forge this on turn two. And then coin it out on turn three or play it on turn four. And this is absolutely insane. We already have in here, we have a. Uh, okay, let me, let me go. There's the three mana neutral rush right now, which I forget that you can forge. Cyclopean Crusher. And that's a four star card because it, it's a three mana rush. And you can do that. So Gloomstone Guardian, you have a 6-8 Taunt. That's going to be, I'm going to say that's better. That's at least as good as a 3-mana Rush. 4-mana, 6-8 Taunt. 3-mana, 6-5 Rush. I'm going to say they're roughly equal there. So if you're, so you never want to discard two cards. Uh, destroy one of your Mana Crystals. Actually not that bad. Because what that means is when you get to turn 9 or when you get to turn 10, that mana crystal doesn't matter. So can you play two of these on the same turn? Like that's the one edge case. But you can destroy that mana crystal. You get that mana crystal back the next turn. So that's not even a downgrade. So you don't even need to forge it in the super late game. So yeah, this is going to be a really good card. I'm going to say four stars on this one. And then... Last cl cl uh, sorry, last cr card here, Trog Gem Tosser, three mana three two, <clears throat> Finale, deal one damage to a random enemy minion for each of your mana crystals. So you play this on turn three. This is a three mana three two with an arcane intellect attached to it, and that's good. That that's good by itself. And then the and then if you get to like turn ten, that is a three mana three two with uh oh, there's made mask of Cthulhu attached to it, and that's really really good because again th like this can just go face and this can be a bunch of face damage. This can clear stuff. You can set it up where you have like a. Like Mage has the seven, the five mana seven four that deals like seven damage to things. And on turn seven, uh, again, this is a three mana three two that does the same thing. In turn ten, it's better. You don't need the elemental synergies that set up. Like if we take a like if okay, if we go over to Mage and we go over to like like Blast Mage Minor, uh, that that generates a card, but it does basically the same thing. There's the uh, where's the elemental thingy. Where are you? Where are you? Not you, not you, not you, not you, not you. Like Goblin Blast Mage, you need a mech for it, but it's better than that. Okay, let's just go over here. Mage, dunk. 
uh, five mana, class card. Tainted Remnant. Oh, Tainted Remnant. I forgot. Tainted Remnant is not Tainted Remnant was rare. But, okay, anyway. Tainted Remnant, you can see right here that you need the elemental synergy and you get kind of like the bigger minion with it. But it's still basically, it's much more consistent with that. So this is at least four stars. I might be even five stars. The finale brings it down. I'm going to say four star plus. I would not be surprised if this ends up being a five star card. Like you can't play two of these at the same time. Because of the finale. But I think it's going to be a really good card. All right. So that's Druid there. I think Druid's in a bad spot because they're going to, like, Dragons was how they won, and they're going to get a lot fewer Dragons. But they get a good Taunt, and they get a good uh, Tempo card, possibly even Damage card with the uh, Gem Tosser. So overall, I think Druid, I think they got good cards. I just don't know how much it's going to help them with. Okay, let's go over to Hunter. Hunter, deal one damage, summon a random minion of that cost. This is meant to work with uh, spell damage. Uh, spell damage hunter, ha I've never, I have not seen spell damage hunter work in arena. So deal, uh, so deal damage, summon a minion of that cost. So it's like a one mana car, random one mana car, deal one damage, and two, that's probably a two star card. If you can get the deck for it, it's fine. But I'm just going to say two stars because I think it's like, it doesn't do enough. Elemental Companion. Summon a random Elemental Companion. So Misha, Huffer, and Leok, just their variants. So a 4-4 four, four Spell Immune, that's good for Arena. Uh, three mana, your spells cost one less, that's mediocre. Uh, Leok, Spell Damage plus two, this one might be the strongest one depending on what you've got is it better than regular animal companion i'm not sure like animal companions and borderline three star car or four, bo bo borderline four star card i think this is worse than animal companion so i'm just going to say it's a high three star card Mantle Shaper, 5 mana, 5-5, five, five, cost 1 less for each spell you've cast while holding this. 5 mana, 5-5, five, five, that's mediocre. If you've cast 1 spell, 4 mana, 5-5, five, five, that's good. 3 mana, 5-5, five, five, you... Like, I'm trying to think, how can you temple this out? So turn 1, you play something. Is there a possible way to play this on... The earliest you can get it out is a three mana five five. That okay, that I've just done that. So like if you play a one mana, I'm I'm trying to think, is there a way I don't think like there, there's like a there's like a serious edge case where you can get this for two mana, but three mana realistically it, it, it's an above average card. So it's a three star card. I'm just trying to think what are the ways that you can cheat this out. So I'm just I'm trying to think what are the ways that you can cheat this card out, and I don't really know any ways that that's gonna work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Not much. Not, not much needs to, be, needs to be said. All right. These two cards we did over in Death Knight. So, does anything change for these cards? Sorry. Does anything change for Obsidian Relevant or Mismatch Fossils? I don't think so. I think they're pretty much the same as Death Knight. So I'm just going to copy. Paste. All right. All right. So overall, Hunter, Hunter, good. Is Hunter good? I think Hunter is okay. Let me... I just realized it's probably better for me to do this so you guys can see it adjusted so you can see all five of them in here. Eh, not really much needs to be said about Hunter. I mean, they're okay, but they're not really great. All right, on the mage. 
Summoning more ward secret. When your turn starts, summon a copy of your highest cost minion. That means your minion has to be on board. It has to live. And then this has to go off to summon a copy of it. And it's summon a copy. So if it's damaged or anything like that, then the damage is going to take over. I don't see it working. Summoning ward. Um, uh, one star. I just don't see it working. It doesn't. All right. Chaos creation. Deal six damage. Summon a random six cost minion. Destroy the bottom six cards of your deck. All right. So for a long time in arena, the motto was d d uh, fatigue doesn't matter. Destroying cards in your deck doesn't matter. So, Chaos Creation, so it's basically Firelands Portal for one less mana. So, I mean, Firelands Portal, seven mana, uh, ignore the Hearth Mana because it's got the old uh, tag here. Deal six damage, summon a six cost minion, right? So, you get Firelands Portal for one less mana, but destroying the bottom six cards of your deck, that actually does matter in current arena. And there's enough armor gain and there's enough life steal that the face damage that you get is not worth basically fatiguing yourself. So that fatigue factor is what is holding me back on this card. Because obviously Firelands is a five-star card. This is a cheaper Firelands, but you can only pick one of these. And there is a very, very real chance that if you play this, your opponent's just going to have more value and it's not going to be worth it. So... I I don't I'm not sure if I can go down to two stars because of the fatigue factor. Like I I I I'm gonna say three star minus. Because again again, this is like current arena. I've had decks, mage decks, where I've played like Firelands Portal four times in a row, and I've been outvalued. And I've been nowhere near being able to keep up with what my opponent can do. So if this was like four mana, maybe it would be Firelands level. If this is five mana, five mana, four mana, definitely four mana, maybe five mana. At six level, you're just gaining one mana to get a Firelands, but you're potentially just ruining your entire deck. So, and again, as I said, fatigue does matter. There are plenty of classes like, you're going to face those warriors where you're just not going to be able to do enough, where they're going to outlast you, and you're going to need those cards to be able to outlast them, and they can just, like, run you out of stuff. So, that's basically where I am at with uh, Chaos Creation. Soul Freeze. Freeze a minion and its neighbors. Deal damage to your hero equal to the number frozen. So. Forget the card. I forget the card. Frost Nova. Frost Nova for two less mana, but you deal damage to yourself. Is still not good. One star. Yeah, dealing damage to yourself in Mage, that's not good. Frost Nova for one mana is decent. It's good. But I don't think it's good enough by itself. Actually, no, nah, I'll go two stars. I'll go two stars. Low, low two star card, actually, I think. Because taking three damage is not horrible. Being able to just like block your opponent for a turn, sometimes that is needed to set up like a super powerful play. But overall, I'm just going to say, eh. All right, that's where I am. And then Elemental Companion, Mantle Shaper. I don't think they change that much. So I'm just going to copy these over here. All right. So, Mage, nothing special here. All right, Paladin. Here are these. Sir Finley the Intrepid. If you've excavated twice, transform all enemy minions into 1-1 Murlocs. 
So if you've excavated twice, and this is Paladin Shaman, the Paladin get excavation cards. Paladin got two excavation cards, one of which is like its regular card. All right, now, I, I'm actually I'm gonna do a, the Kaleidosaur first, just because I'm gonna copy these over for Shaman here, and then I'll come back to Finley. All right. So fossilized Kaleidosaur, Battlecry gained two random bonus effects. Bonus effects are like standard, uh, like Wind Fury Taunt, Reborn, Divine Shield, Lane, things like that. Excavated Treasure. So three mana, three, four. That's a good card. Excavated Treasure, that's really good. That's going to be a four. Uh, okay, so yeah, that's going to be a four-star card. Because you're going to get an above, you're, you're, you're almost certainly going to get an above stats minion for this. I'm just checking here, anything important, nothing important on my phone there. And you're going to be able to excavate. All right, so if that's the baseline, then, then Finley is going to be better. And the other card that Paladin has is going to be better. And I need to go over those first. I'm going to do uh, Shroomscavate. Give a minion Wind Fury and Divine Shield excavated treasure. If you've got a big stat and minion on the board, this is great. If you've got like a 2-3 on the board, this is like mediocre. So this, this is not a good buff card. This this is a this is a two-star card. Like if you've got a minion that already has stats on the board, this can be really, really good. But it number one, it needs to be on the board. Number two, it needs to be so it needs to be on the board. It can't be something from your hand because otherwise you don't get the wind fury. It needs to survive. People are going to trade off your Paladin stuff anyways. So that's the problem with this card is that without the stats, it's kind of dependent on something on the board, and that brings it down. But you get to Excavate, and Excavate is decent. All right, so Shroomscavate, I'd say two stars. No, give me da, 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 da. Okay, so if I look at those, so Finley. How good is Finley now? If you get to... Uh, so I'm thinking about it. I'm comparing it to the Warrior version, the 4-4 uh, the four -four that wins the Brawl, and I'm comparing it to Warlock. Warrior is really, really good at making games last a long time, so they can usually excavate twice. Uh, Warlock is has just natural draw so they can usually excavate twice so here uh like is finley gonna are you going to be able to excavate twice is the question so question number one you have to build an excavate deck around finley is that worth it for this and then question two is this is this actually good i mean it's good but like Again, you compare it to Gary. Gary can put a bunch of 3-3s three on the board, which can provide tempo. Gary can much easier wipe a lot of the board. I mean, Finley does better for like certain board states, but for most board states, Gary is going to be better. For most board states, the 4-4 four four is going to be better. Because just transforming minions in the 1-1 one -one Murlocs, you're probably only going to hit like one thing like a mass polymorph and a mass polymorph is good so I, I, I like again I'm going through these ones here Gary's absolutely insane Gary Gary they are wrong on Gary and here I'll show you why they are wrong on Gary one second let's just get rid of, let's get rid of this class card deck win rate where's Gary Gary's right here you build a deck around Gary. Gary is insane. Let's go Warrior Epic. Bad. Okay, so it's not it's not like the tippy tippy top tier. But if you've excavated twice, this always wins, and that's basically that. If you go to Death Knight, the Ox really isn't that great. If you go to Rogue, where's Rogue? 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 Rogue doesn't have it here. Mechanic. Oh, sorry. Rogue. 
Ah. Rogue mechanics excavate. Antique flinger really isn't that good. So overall, I think it's it's not that great. That's just basically where I'm at overall with this. I think I think the effect like the having to excavate twice. I'm not sure if you're going to have the deck, if you're going to have the draw to be able to get to the point to excavate twice to make it good. And if you do, it's good, but I don't think it's great. So it's like, I think it's only three stars. This it's, It takes a while for me to... So that, that's basically where I'm at. I'm trying to figure out in my head how good this is. And I think it's not going to be good, number one, because the excavate twice. Number two, because... The effect is useful, but it's not really all that great. And then over here, prosthetic can, mining casualties. We've seen both of these before. Oh, and here, Paladin, uh, Paladin Legendary Treasure here. The Azurite Dragon. Give all other minions in hand deck and battlefield plus three, plus three. This comes out way too late to actually be useful. So this is not even a treasure you necessarily want to uh, build around. So if I go back up here to Death Knight, I'm just going to copy over here. Prosthetic Hand is okay. You're going to have fewer. You're going to have fewer um, undead, so it's going to be a little bit less useful. Mining casualties we have before. So overall, I think the Excavate package is good for Paladin. Is it great? I don't think so, but it is a good package for that. But again, the treasure is not really something you want to build around, and the legendary is not something that's really as great as other classes. All right, priest, glowstone gyre worm, life steal, quick draw, deal five damage, forge, change quick draw into battle cry. So it's a four four elemental version of the um, sunspot dragon, which is a really good card. Like, uh, let's see, neutrals. Some sunspot dragon. I don't think it's that good. I don't think like I don't think it's like borderline five stars. I think it's like a four star card. So it's sunspot dragon that you can change into a battle cry to get rid of its uh quick draw effect. And that's still good. The quick draw effect deal five other classes have something similar to that. So yeah, four star card. I mean solid card, life steal. It's a solid. It's a solid card. It's got life steal. It's got damage. It's going to be useful for priest. I mean, that's all needs to be said. All right. Pendant of Earth, Shadow of Reflections. Uh, same thing as what we had for Druid. I don't think either of those cards are really all that good. So I just copy over here. Shadow Word Steel. Return an enemy minion to your hand. So this is a sap that gets you. Hmm. All right. So you remove a minion from the opponent's board. You gain a minion on in your hand. So if your opponent plays something really, really powerful, like if they play the... Um, da, 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 da. Uh, seven mana six six. I, I'm not sure if that's even going to be in anymore. Uh, the giant mech. Uh, the seven mana six six that d death rattles into an eight eight. I mean, you play. They play that. You play this, and your opponent feels absolutely horrible. That's all that needs to be said. So you don't want to use this on smaller things, but if they play, it's kind of like a version of mind control. It it even has that mind control thing where the the mere existence. Of this card basically changes the entire meta because like it for those of you who haven't played in the mind control meta when priest had uh mind control for 10 mana basically once you got to 10 mana you just never played anything big against priest or you played stuff where your goal was to bait them into using a mind control so you could remove that thing and you could play the actual thing that you wanted to play and you would hope they didn't have a second mind control Shadow Word Steel falls into that category where your opponent is just going to be so afraid to play a big thing and get screwed over by this because they'll get the card and they'll get the card advantage from it. So I think, I don't know if this rises to five stars, but I think it's definitely four. 
Not world steel word. It's definitely four. Hidden gen, two mana, two, two stealth. At the end of your turn, restore uh, two health to all friendly characters. So if you just leave this stealth and your opponent doesn't have anything to deal with uh, things that are stealthed, this is just like infinite health for the rest of the game. This can also work with overheal, where you just play one of these and you get the heal for the rest of the game. Uh, two mana, two, two stealth is by itself like a two-star card, but the heal effect is definitely useful. And there could just be a potential where you just outlast your opponents because of this. I I see. I think yeah. I think this is three stars. I think less because you don't want it not for attacking, but more just because the AOE heal consistently. It lets you do trades. It lets you avoid like your opponents have to be able to like handle that. And it's going to be difficult for them. So I def I don't think it does enough to hit four, but I definitely think it's useful enough to hit three. So a decent set for Priest. Like Shadow Word Steel is like something that will just make Priest good. Because the, like the existence of this card entirely changes how you play around Priest. So this might be a fundamental meta-changing card, even if I only have it as four and not five. All right. Road Cards. Fool's Gold. Gain a random golden pirate and elemental from other classes. So one mana to get two random cards. And it can be a pirate or an elemental. So let's go back over here. Minion. Pirate. Class cards. Sparse data. Sparse data. Wait. Uh, uh, okay, one sec. I forgot I had Death Rattle on here. Okay, get rid of Death Rattle. Okay. Class card pirates. So, let me double check. I don't want to hit. So the problem is I don't want to reset sparse data or anything along those lines. Does where have any power? Hmm. This is interesting because I'm looking through this and it says from other classes. So what this means is you got a 50-50, if, if I'm correct here, if everything is correct here, you have a 50-50 chance to get either a ship's chirurgeon or a sword eater off of fool's gold. And if you get a sword eater, like that's obviously going to be insane. If you get a ship's chirurgeon, that's, it's not good, but there might be things you can do with it. So that is an interesting thing here. And then for, uh, okay, and again, this is assuming that I have everything set up here. <clears throat> elemental becomes a lot more weirder. Like, elemental becomes a lot weirder. And usually, elementals, I'm going to say they're pretty decent. See, so yeah, I think this is, yeah, I think this is three stars. I think, like, the chance that you're going to be able to get a, uh, Captain, like I, I forget the name already, the the warrior the two five with the weapon. I think that chance is going to be really good. Rogue, yeah, it's one mana, two cards. One of the cards is almost always going to be good, and the other one should be fine. So I think yeah, three stars. That's fine. All right, uh, shade, shade stone skulker, quick pick. Are those really that much fundamentally different? I think Quick Pick from uh, Demon Hunter. Quick Pick. Skulker. S All right. These ones actually do change a little bit here. Skulker becomes two stars. 
because you're, you're going to have your rogue weapon no matter what, right? And so if it's two stars, then it becomes like the uh, the little the owl, right? Yeah, it becomes an Emerald Sky Talon, basically. If you have the weapon, it becomes an Emerald Sky Talon, and that's a two-star card by itself, and you're always going to have that weapon. So it's going to be in the Emerald Sky Talon's kind of in that range. You're not going to have bigger weapons, so it's almost always going to be an Emerald Sky Talon, but that consistency is going to make it better for Rogan because of that. A quick pick. It's worse than it is in Demon Hunter. Demon Hunter quick pick is more valuable than it is in Rogue, but overall, I'm still going to say it's you're still getting two cards for two mana, and I think that's still worth three stars by itself. Shadow Ward Steel, Hidden Gem, same thing. I just went over those cards. Those are both really, really, really good cards. They're going to be really, really good cards in Rogue as well. So overall, a solid set. I'm not sure if it does enough to like... The problem is, is that the meta just fundamentally is diff it goes against what Rogue wants to do. So I don't know if that fixes things for Rogue or not. All right. Uh, Shaman. Okay, I'm going to go with the Shaman card first. Digging straight down, deal 8 damage to a minion excavated treasure. So, uh, basically, kill a minion and excavate a treasure. I mean, that's really, really good. Uh, so, that's really good. That's going to be a four-star card. I don't think that really needs to be gone over. Four stars for digging straight down. All right. Next one here, Finley and Shroomscape. It's the same problem I have with Paladin. I don't think I need to go over those again. Like, Shroomscavate, you need something big on the board to hit. And I'm not sure if you're going to get that. Finley, you need to have an Excavate package. And I'm not sure if you're going to get the Excavate package. Plus, like, the entire thing about you're still leaving stuff up on the board with it. Okay. Aftershocks. Deal one damage to all minions three times. Costs two less if you cast a spell last turn. So this is good. Four mana, deal three. Okay, because it's it's all minions, so it includes your minions as well. But it's four mana, deal three. That's kind of a hellfire. And it's a hellfire that can potentially cost two less to cast a spell. And casting a spell is not really that good. Not, not really, it's not really that hard. So if we take a look, what's hellfire... When you look at Hellfire, Hellfire is a four-star card. And stream, it should be. Just double check here. Wait, what? No, excavate. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I don't need to excavate up. Hellfire does not have excavate. Yeah, Hellfire is... Yeah, Hellfire is... Four star, uh, it's four star card because it's three mana because Hearthrene hasn't updated their tooltips. But okay, and that's a good card, and it can also uh, double his face damage. So this, uh, this can be sometimes four mana, and this can be sometimes two mana. So I think it's, I think it's gonna, it's, st it's still gonna be four stars because the deal one damage to all minions three times. Number one, that's improved by spell power a lot more by spell power. I don't know if all three hits get two damage if your spell power minion dies first. But there's that. Number two is that um, this does a lot better with a lot of things like Divine Shields or anything like that for dealing damage like that. So yeah, this is a really good AoE. I'm going to say four stars. Needle Rock Tone. At the end of your turn, gain two armor and two mana zero two. Gain two armor and draw a card. Is Mana Tide Sodom still around? Mana Tide Sodom still around. It's a better Mana Tide Sodom. Uh, I, mean, I mean, that's really what needs to say. Gain, uh, like, this just goes by itself. And uh, is it better than the Panner? So, Gold Panner is a 1 2. End of your turn, draw a card. This is a 0 2, but you gain armor. And you still draw a card. 
does that fundamentally change it? I don't think so. Like, I don't think... The, the times where the gold panner's one damage or the gold panner's ability to just, like, knock into something matters is not really enough to knock it from a three-star to a two-star card or to make up for the, um, the armor gain that you would gain, which matters from it. So for Nino Rock Totem, I would say that's a... Yeah, I would say that's a three-star card. So, overall, Shaman, I think Shaman has a... Oh, and also the uh, Shaman Excavate here. The Azerite Murloc. Transform all your other minions into ones that cost three more, keeping their original costs. There is... A, so, this includes in your... I am assuming that this includes in your deck. Because otherwise, the cost would not matter. So... There's a priest card, which is, uh, I forget the name. It's an epic card, which does basically, the stars align, right? So priest has transform minions into hands that ones that cost three more, they keep their original cost. And you can see this right here is a, that, that, that's a six star card, just because of the amount of BS that you can get from that. So the Azerite Murloc does that, including in your deck. So basically, buffs your hand, buffs your deck, and so you, you need stuff to play with it, so it's not completely busted, but that's an absolutely great treasure. Like, it doesn't have the tempo of some of the other treasures, like the warrior treasure, I don't think it's better than that, the mage treasure, I don't think it's better than that, but I think it is going to be a really good treasure, especially if you can play, if you can uh, delay the game long enough for it. All right, anyway, over here. So Shaman, overall, really, uh, I would say, good set. Two four-star cards, some good AoE, uh, decent Excavate. Finley, um, uh, uh, but Needle Rock Totem's pretty good. Needle Rock Totem. Fix that. I Next one here, we got Warlock and Warrior than the Neutrals. So most of these cards should already be done. All right, let's start here. Elementium Geode. Battlecry and Death Rattle draw a card, deal two damage to your hero. Is this better than Loot Hoarder? So, is this is Loot Hoarder with battle with a? Uh, this is Loot Hoarder effectively, but pay four man, four health to draw a card. Because the battle, like, because death rattle draw card is just loot hoarder. So the question is, is it worth four damage to your hero to get an extra card draw? No. I'd rather have loot hoarder than this, honestly, and I wouldn't even rather have loot hoarder. Like, I'm pretty sure loot hoarder is has like a penalty in warlock. Yeah, Loot Hoarder has a penalty, and this is worse than Loot Hoarder. Is it enough to hit, like, that one-star do-not-pick level? I don't think so. But, yeah, this is not a good card. So I'm going to say two stars, but the lower end of two stars. <laughs> All right, Gloomstone Guardian, Trog Gem Tosser. Uh, I went over these a Druid. These are both very, very, very good cards. Yeah, they're both four-star cards. They're potentially five-star cards. So, yeah, those are really good cards. I went over the other ones for Mage. Uh, Chaos Creation, Soul Freeze. So, Warlock does not have Firelands Portal, so Chaos Creation might be a thing. But Warlock also, also, um, and Warlock has the, um, they has, what, the other thing that Warlock has is they've got the, uh, the sludges, the slimes, whatever. And you shuffle those into the bottom of the deck. So potentially with chaos, like potentially chaos creation, you put the barrels of sludge in the bottom of your deck. You get three or four of them. You play this, you blow something up, and then all those sludges go and completely destroy the opponent. The, so this is kind of like a, uh, like before you only had the waste remover, the 7-7, seven, seven, to be able to take advantage of this. And now you have one of these, which can do that. So this is a lot better in Warlock 
than it is in Mage if you have that specific deck, which is why I'm raising it up to like a medium three star. And like, and if you get up a lot of them, then this becomes like a four star, five star, even like six star card. Because you just, you get all the barrels of sludge, you play this, and you just John Madden everything. Soul Freeze, same problem. So not much needs to be said there. All right, so Warlock, I think overall, like, that's mediocre. But you got some good cards here. I don't think it changes anything, not that much. doesn't change anything fundamentally about it. All right, finally here, Warrior. Deep Miner Bran. Six mana two four. If your deck has no duplicates, your battle cries trigger twice for the rest of the game. This is not an arena card. This is a constructed card. So this is not good enough to build a deck around. Because you have to have this in your hand. You have to play this on turn six, which means you have to anti-tempo. You need to have a bunch of small of really, really strong battle cries to use with this. Are you going to get it? I don't think you are. I think this is a one star card for Warrior. Yeah, not much needs to be said there. Burning Heart, Crimson Expanse. We had those from Demon Hunter earlier. I don't think that fundamentally changes anything from them. They are okay cards, but I've kind of already talked about them. Aftershock, Need a Rock Totem. I just talked about that for Shaman. Those are good cards. So, decent set. I'm not going to say a great set for Warrior. And the last one here, we've got Neutrals. Marut Stonebinder. If your deck has no duplicates, discover an elemental to summon. Add others to your hand. So this is a 7 mana, so no dupes, a 7 mana 5, 6 that gives you a, another elemental on the board. And so there are big elementals from this, so you're going to get the stats. Uh, but Priest already has, like, uh, as an example here, if we go to the Priest Legendaries, they already have uh, Elise, which is a very similar thing. If your deck has no duplicates, and I think it's like, it's 7 mana for 4-4s four or something like that, so you get like a bunch of tempo, which is a better than car having cards in your hand. And at least just, well, part of the reason is that it's Priest and Priest sucks. But if you take a look, like Elise is down here and all these other cards are up here. But this is for all, this is for all classes. Though. So if we say Elise is theoretically a five-star card, Marut would probably be... Four stars is enough. If seven mana is that enough to hit it? Five. I don't think it has like the win now potential. I think it's just ultimately a four star card. All right, that's why I feel about that. There is a seven mana, seven five taunt. Death Rail, double the stats of all elementals in your hand and deck. You need a dedicated hand. You need, you need a dedicated elemental deck for that. You're not going to get a de dedicated elemental for that deck for that. That's a one-star card. And it comes out way too slow for the uh, double, for the stat double to matter. Iridescent Gyre Worm, Death Rattle. Give each of your minions a random bonus effect. That's a three-star card. That that like okay, a that's a three mana card with <sighs> something your opponent has to clear because if this hits on one thing, if this hits on one thing, that's insane. And if it hits an entire board of things, that's super insane. I'm gonna actually go low four stars on this. Because I think the potential with this, even if it's just like buffing, you play this on three, and then turn four, you play something else and you buff this, you get the buff off of that. I think that's really strong. Uh, you play this on three, you play this on a board with a bunch of other things, you have to clear off all those other, th you have to either clear off this thing first and you buff the entire board, or you have to clear off the entire board and you leave this and then you can reload. I think there are going to be a lot of situations where this is going to be a real pain to deal with. 
And that's the reason I'm going to say it's like it's not it's not a good four stars, but it's like a really low level. It's a high three. Shale Spider. If you played an elemental last turn, draw a card. Okay, so Mage and Shaman, this is going to be really good. Other classes, probably not. So Mage Shaman, I'm going to say it's three stars. And then other classes, I'm just going to say two stars. Because yeah, at Mage and Shaman, they get elementals. They play elementals. This thing will go off at some point. Stone Drake. Divine Shield, Taunt, Life, Steel cannot, can't be targeted by spells or hero powers. The first card I think of is Kartut Defender. And Kartut Defender, because it's a 3-4, which becomes a 3-1. So that's roughly going to be a 2-8 Divine Shield. Restore, I believe it's 4 health, so it restores 8 health. Stone Drake is probably going to restore at least 6 health. Because you can't remove it by traditional means. So that's roughly where I think of it. And Cards of Defender is one of those cards like I'm happy to have in certain decks. And other decks I'm like, eh. All right, I'm going to trust Hearth Arena on this. Because I like Cards of Defender probably more than Hearth Arena does. Let me see here. No, no, no class cards. Let me, let me, I'm just checking here. So... 50% neutral. Just see, like, what's the level? 50, 51%. Yeah, it's about two stars. Yeah, two stars. Yeah, I'm just checking here. Around this level. Okay, yeah, that, yeah, that's about a two-star card. I, my, my gut tells me, like, is it, that I like this card, but I do have to think it's just going to be two stars. But it is going to be super annoying. Like, it doesn't do much by itself, but it's going to be super annoying because it's going to be a lot of health and it's going to be hard to, like, remove because you have to trade things into it. So it's, it's kind of, I want to go three stars, but I know realistically it's two stars. That's that's where I'm at. Uh, and also they gave uh, some excavate buffs to one, two, and three mana. Number one, give a friendly minion two damage. Deal two damage to random enemy minion. I mean, that's a better one mana card. At the end of your turn, deal two damage to all enemy minions. That's a really good two star card for a two excavate card. Three mana, discover an elemental to summon, and the other is to your hand. So that's basically the Martut thing. And that's really, really, really good, especially if you get a Therizane that just bop. Like, that's the thing with Martut and Therizane is that Therizane by herself sucks. But. If you play Martut, I'm sorry. If you play Martut and you discover Therizane, that just kind of that's like one of those cards just wins you the game. You play World Pillar Fragment and you get Therizane. You get a seven five taunt that your opponent has to clear, and then the two other elementals, I don't care what they are, they're going to have double stats, and that's just like insane value. So Therizane is like a bad card to pick, but it's going to be a card that's going to have a strong impact and just like blow out games by itself. All right. So, those are the cards for uh, Delvin the Depot. But, because I was not doing... Because I don't do this th these things planned, there's something else that's going to be happening to Arena. So, first off, there's the uh, sets here. Badlands, Titans, Caverns of Time, Core. Those are usual. Path of Arts is useful. Uh, Skullamance and Fraction, Alterag Valley. I mean, those are decent cards. But, they're going to be introducing Duels Treasures. So, they take some... Because Duels is dead... They're taking the dead cards and they're throwing it in. And this will be a last pick. So you get one of these cards. I don't believe these start in your hand. These don't start in your hand, right? All right. So I'm just going to run through these. I'm not going to give a rating for these. I'm just going to say, first slot is that these look mediocre. All right. Amalgamate, destroy all friendly minions, summon an um, amalgamation with their combined attack and health. I mean that's I mean that's good in duels if like it it basically depends 
Does your opponent have a hard removal? Yes or no? Do you want to, like, uh, because this is useful for, like, blocking around AoE, I would say. Is it worth a card slot? Probably not. Is it worth a card slot to block AoE to make a giant minion that's easier for your opponent to remove? Probably not. Mind Apocalypse. Both players draw two cards and gain a mana crystal. That's a symmetrical effect. It's a symmetrical effect that you will benefit from before your opponent, so it's decent, but it's not okay. Supercharge. Give your minions two health. Uh, mediocre. Gentleman's Top Hat. Give a minion two two and Death Rattle. Give your Top Hat to another random friendly minion. Uh, sure, depends on your thing. Hunter's Insight. Reduce the cost of all cards in your hand by one. Sometimes useful, sometimes not. Party Portal. When you cast a spell, summon a random minion of the same cost. That could be useful in things like uh, certain classes. I'll be useful, but I don't think that's that great. Uh, so to see, it's give all minions in your deck plus one, plus one. That's great. We've had that card before. The, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, there was the, there was a Druid card. Which was, so the first one was give all in minions in your hand, plus one. And the second version, like if you were able, it was the, uh, what's the mechanic, the mechanic? The shuffle to the bottom of your deck mechanic, uh, dredge. So if you dredged it up, then you would give all minions in your deck, plus one, plus one. So it's not hand, but it's still going to be useful. It's like an embiggen. It's kind. It's kind of like an embiggen that doesn't screw you over. So an embiggen's like a four star card. So this is so to seeds really good. Spy class. Put a copy of a random card in your opponent's hand into yours. It costs three less. So one mana, get a card, get a discount. Sure. Loyal henchman. Uh, start a game. Draw this. Taunt. Every turn, this is in your hand. Game plus one plus one. That's good. Definitely good. Necrotic poison. Two mana, destroy a minion. That's good. Blood moon. Give your minions plus one plus one and life steal. Situationally useful, depending on the deck. Clockwork Assistant, plus one, plus one for each spell you've cast this game. This can be absolutely broken in something like Mage. So Mage, you take this other classes, just depends. Uh, coin Pouch, summon a random three-cost minion. Upgrade this and shuffle it into your deck. So I believe it goes to like a six-cost and a nine-cost, if I remember playing duels right. Uh, summon three, one, one ghost. So uh, upgrade this and shuffle it to your deck. I think same thing. Murloc Holmes, when your opponent draws a card, add a copy. So three mana, three, four, get a copy of a card. That's good. Enrage, give your uh, hero a plus six attack this turn. That's mediocre. Golden Kobold, replace taunt, three mana, six, six taunt. Replace your hand with legendary minions. That's extremely powerful. Looming Presence, draw two cards, gain four armor, better arcane intellect, good. Mage armor, why the fuck is this an arena? Why is three mana gains and or why why is this even an option? Get that the fuck out of here, Blizzard. Three give a minion three mutating injection. Give a minion plus four plus four and taunt. Better blessing of kings for three mana. Again, why the fuck do you have mage armor and blessing of kings next to each other? Like, this is this is part of the ones where it's like, who the fuck curated this? Who the fuck thought that that was like a good card? Like maybe 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 an Odin warrior deck. And I'm so I'm not even sure if Odin's gonna be around anymore. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's part of the issue I have here. Uh, old Militia Horn. Give your minions plus one, plus one, and taunt. Upgrade this. And I, I assume that's just going to be more buffs. So, okay. Puzzle Box. Transform all and all minions into random ones that cost three or more. Play this on your side of the board. I mean, there's certain things you can do with that. Surly Mob. Destroy a random enemy, enemy minion. Upgrade this and shuffle it into your deck. Deadly Shot. Deadly Shot's fine. Exerciser. Silence any minion attacked by this weapon. In non-weapon classes, this is actually really good because you have a kind of silence, and there are certain things where taking the damage is definitely worth the silence. Stone of Jordan gain to attack this turn only. Draw two cards and give any spells drawn plus one plus one. So Arcane Intellect plus Benefit. And that's good. Vampiric Fangs. Destroy a minion restore itself to your hero. There was a uh, priest card that was a four mana version that healed the entire board and that was really good and this is a three mana so this is definitely really good worshiper your hero has plus one attack on your turn situationally useful but okay as astral portal summon a random legendary minion four mana okay that's really 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 good because you're going to get something that's going to just be busted or you're going to get something above card this is one of those cards you always take greedy pickaxe after hero attacks gain an empty mana crystal 
I'm not sure if that's good enough for Arena. In duels, perhaps. In Arena, I'm not sure. Beastly Beauty, Rush. After this attacks a minion and survives, transform this into an 8-8. Eight, eight. So 2-6, you hit something. And it becomes an 8-8. Eight, eight. And I'm not sure if the 8-8 eight, eight has Rush or not. If the 8-8 eight, eight has Rush, then that's absolutely insane. But I don't, I don't know enough about duels for Beastly Beauty. Butch, Rush, has 1-1 one, one for each beast that's died this game. In Druid, uh, sorry, sorry, in, yeah, and in Druid, in Druid and Hunter, this can be incredibly powerful. Uh, Crusty the Crustacean, Battlecry, destroy a minion, gain its attack and health, just like a much better Vile Spine, so that's like a six star, potentially seven star card there. Pure Cold, deal eight damage to the enemy hero and freeze it. That's Pyroblast for half the mana, and you freeze the enemy hero. That's really good for certain classes. Uh, Bubba. Summon six one one bloodhounds to attack an enemy minion. I mean that's going to be really good just because of the tempo there. So again, really really good card there. Princess battlecry didn't gain the death rattles of three random minions in your deck because it doesn't have taunt. I don't think that's that great. Holy book silence and destroy a minion. Gain a ten ten copy of it. I mean, summon a 10, 10 copy of it. So eight mana, kill a big minion. Summon a ten ten copy. So I think, just by going over this, you see the problem with the um, treasures here. So with legendaries, you're pretty much going to be able to like customize your deck. So even the mediocre legendaries, they're going to be better. But here, with the duels treasures, I mean, there are certain treasures where it's like, why, 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 does main, why is mage armor in arena? Why is enrage in these treasures? There are certain treasures that are just like so bad, no one is ever going to take them. Like, they say they've curated them. I want to know who curated this. Like, and there's a new, like, where, where, where they said here. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure they said they curated these things here. Okay, a curated pool of duels treasures. Who thought some of these things were good? Because there's certain cards here, and this is like any arena player will know. Crusty the Crustacean is insane. Pure Cold is insane. Uh, Bubba is insane. Butch is situationally useful. Uh, like, Astral Portal is going to be insane. Vampiric Fangs is going to be really, really good. Uh, certainly, like, there's there's cards here. Like, Mutating Injection is going to be really good. There's a vet. There is a significant difference in power level between certain cards in this one. And it's just, like, it's much, much, much worse than it is for the legendaries. Because the legendaries, you know you're going to get something good. With these cards, like there's there, there's going to be things. Like it, It's going to feel bad if you get like three mediocre ones and you face someone who gets something like a golden kobold that they play on three and then they just destroy you with random legendaries. So I'm going to say I am not a fan of this change. I am not a fan of... Like, I think they need to have like literally an arena expert get an arena expert or two to go in, to look at the treasures, to adjust the treasures, to try to fix some of these things. All right. That is it for me. If you've watched this video, this video has been like what, about an hour and a half. Yeah, hour and a half or so. All right. That is my review of the mini set. That is my review of the, um, the treasures. As I said, I have been having it the last couple of months have been the best arena meta in a really 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 long time if it keeps up i'll keep playing i'll keep reviewing if it doesn't eh, then thank you all all in the harvestone community uh for reading my reviews for watching my videos and all that stuff uh i'm not sure how long i'll keep playing hearthstone if it goes back to just like a complete uh clusterfuck but i am in a better mental spot now than i was before all right so thank you all for watching and i'll see you guys in the arena take care